Hey everyone, a disclaimer for the following story. This story contains some very graphic and very violent details that some listeners may find disturbing. Please use the chapters feature to skip if you need to do that. If not, and you're okay with it, then here is that story. The year was 2002. I was fresh out of high school with no real clear path on what I wanted to do for the future. Most of my friends went on to college and some even studied at a country, but I was that one guy that just had enough of studies. My dad told me, it's either you're going to go to college by force or you're going to find a job by force and pay rent. Well, I really didn't want to study and do more schooling, so I found myself working at my local Walmart as now my dad would be charging me for rent, like I mentioned just right now. But yeah, he was pretty old fashioned. Yeah, I got in it from my grandfather who served in World War II. Now, I know some people might think that the way he treated me once I turned 18 was kinda brutal, but it did help shape me up to become a responsible adult that didn't take any BS from anyone who tried to take advantage of me or my family. Anyway, back to the story. I ended up first by being the one who was pushing carts around in the parking lot, which let me just tell you, is both boring and brutal, especially where I worked in the summertime, this taking place in Texas. Now I did make sure to drink plenty of water and wore my hat and long sleeves to protect my skin, and over time I started to get better and better at it. About a month into the job, I was working the night shift, and a couple of my co-workers and I told ourselves that we were going to get some food at one of the fast food joints after we all clocked off of our shift. It sounded like a great plan, so we did all we could to try and make the time go by as fast as we could, and once it was time, we exit the building and we start heading over to our cars. This is only to encounter quite an interesting sight. There is a guy in nothing but his underwear and some tennis shoes running around the parking lot screaming like a lunatic with a baseball bat of all things. My friends and I looked at each other and joked like the dumb teenagers we were, and I remember we said something along the lines of, man, I want what he's having. Well, we didn't realize in that moment just how serious of a situation we were about to find ourselves in. You see, while we laughed and joked about it in that moment, he started to target the cars and began smashing the windows and hoods of said cars. My friend went furious when he smashed his, and he now yelled at him telling him to knock it off and that he was going to call the cops. Well, he had poked the wasp nest so to speak, because if he wasn't paying attention to any humans before, he was now. Crazy dude literally started a mad dash toward all of us who were standing there near the entrance of the Walmart like, what do we do now? Yeah, no kidding, we had to run. But we had a good 15 or so second head start of a distance between us. I was too scared to stay out there, so I go inside the store with my other co-workers as eventually they too joined me and we dialed for the police. Thump. Thump. Bad word here, bad word there. The crazy man demanded that we open the back door to the Walmart. Of course, it was locked, and the guy even smashes the small window on the door. Now he starts to say he was going to bludgeon us to death. We're all clearly freaking out as he starts making a bunch of strange sounds. They sounded unhuman-like, if that makes any sort of sense. I'm sure it doesn't. It was one of those things you would understand better if you were there with us. But basically, we're thinking to ourselves, where are the cops? Well, the guy did actually stop his tirade against us, but now we peek through the opening in the small window as he goes back into the parking lot and starts smashing more cars again while there's other people watching. Now, let me just go ahead and give a warning here, because what I'm about to describe is quite disturbing. Disturbing in the sense that it contains some very graphic details. Basically, we saw as the man started a chase after a family of four, a mom, a dad, and their two young kids. We could hear the crazy guy saying that he was going to kill them for laughing at him, and the dad reached into a hidden holster underneath his shirt, and in self-defense, myself and one of my other co-workers, since the others had gone out to the front to get a better view, saw through the window opening as the man with the bat 
was shot dead. I still remember it was a total of two gunshots being fired, with one of the gunshots hitting the guy straight on in the temple. My friend and I now looked away as we began to see blood oozing out of him as we went over to a manager as we held back tears, trying to fight off the emotions of what we had just witnessed. I mean, it's not every day you see somebody get shot like that, especially get shot dead. Anyway, it was a whole entire scene, and we had to give statements and talk to the police, and I got counseling for a while after that, since I kept seeing the image of the guy getting shot in the head for weeks, and even months after that, in my dreams. I would eventually recover and move on from the incident, but to say it didn't affect me would be a huge understatement. Oh yes, and before I forget to mention it, I would overhear later on that the dad who protected his family was not charged for anything at all. Not that he should have been anyway, since, I mean, he was protecting them from a man who said out loud he was going to kill them and then ran after them with a metal baseball bat. Also, I would actually eventually go to college and I graduated with a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. I also did some extra schooling after that. And since late 2010, I am a physical therapy trainer who helps people recovering from surgeries as well as injuries. Older listener here, I want to share one of my scary experiences from back when I used to work at Walmart in the early 90s as a sales associate. I was primarily scheduled at nighttime since during the daytime I was taking a few classes as I was trying to get an associate's degree at my local community college. Well anyway, one night when I clocked in, things are relatively slow. Foot traffic is at a minimum, and I'm basically walking around the aisles, trying to keep myself awake to the best of my ability. At about 10.15pm, I was on my final break, and I went outside to have myself a quick cigarette. Some random customer came up to me while I was out there, and he asked if I had a lighter on me. To which I said yes, and then I lit his cigarette. We chit-chatted about the weather for a few minutes like a couple of long-lost pals, and when we noticed this man was appearing to just be talking to himself in the parking lot, we thought out loud, well that sure is kinda weird. I mean, I did mention this was back in the 90s, right? Cell phones weren't really a thing, and AirPods definitely weren't either. So anyway, we kept an eye on him as he soon walks closer to the Walmart and then disappears once he steps through the front doors. Guess you'll have to deal with him, am I right? The guy I just met I remember jokingly saying to me as I tell him I need to get back to work. He says that he was here to get some diapers for his grandson and he thanked me for the quick chat. Before going on his way, however, he said, Remember kid, chase your dreams and if you fail, get back up and try again. Never give up. With that, we were both on our way. Now, as soon as I walk through the front doors of the Walmart, things just go from bad to worse. The guy who walked in there starts screaming and shouting at everyone in the Walmart, talking about how he was going to kill everyone there, that he was going to make the devil really happy, things like that. This was a pretty sketchy Walmart either way, so it didn't faze me as much as I walked past him and over to some co-workers. By the way, this is all taking place in less than a minute. When I took one last look at him, I saw he now had a revolver in his hand. He shot a couple of rounds into the ceiling, and then one at eye level too. That was followed by pure agonizing screams of terror and fear. Now, if it wasn't for what happened next, I think chances are this guy could have potentially gone on a killing spree. Remember the man from earlier in my story? The one who came over and asked for a cigarette and was here for the diapers? The balls of steel on this guy. While the crazy gunman had his back turned toward the entrance, that nice guy from outside literally pulled a Goldberg and speared the guy with a tackle to the floor, knocking the revolver out of the man's grasp. Mr. Balls of Steel, or I guess in this case, let's just call him Duke Nukem, as that's where I'm getting that reference from, then shouts and says, Quick, somebody grab the gun. A couple of hefty men ran over as they secured the weapon and helped to subdue the crazed man. But of course, what about the bullets? Had somebody been struck? Well, indeed, someone had. A woman had been hit in the arm, and she was bleeding really badly. 
A first aid kit was brought over while myself and some other good people helped to control the blood loss as 911 was dialed to get cops and paramedics out to the area. The woman would be taken to the hospital and the cops ended up taking the crazy guy away, but not without quite a bit of a struggle. Needless to say, we considered that Duke Nukem guy, yeah, we're still calling him that, a hero, and the cops praised him and everybody involved for their bravery during a time of need. I still remember I got no sleep at all that night, and the next day at work, my manager told me that she had heard that lady survived her injury. Thank God. I would actually get confirmation of this information, as she actually showed up to the store in order to give us a really nice card and thanked all the employees for coming to give her first aid. It was a huge honor. We made sure to give her a bunch of flowers too, and my manager gave her and the hero discounts any time they came into the store. I would see Duke Nukem guy a few times after that, but then I never saw him again afterward. But if I can say this, I will say, I hope you continue to live a great life, my man. He was a bit older when I met him, so chances are he's since passed on. But I will say, I will never forget that random talk we had that night, and how you told me never to give up, and to always chase my dreams. I was 27 years old when this happened. I'm 6 foot 3, male, well built and a clean muscular, 250 pounds. For some quick history on me, I'm Brazilian and speak Portuguese, as my family is from, well surprise surprise, Brazil. I myself was born here in the United States though, and growing up I had to deal with some really mean bullies who would always make fun of me for how I looked and how I spoke. This carried on into my teenage years, but I did use it as inspiration to bulk up and get quite large. I mean that in a muscular sense, so nobody really messed with me, nor do they rarely now. Speaking of stories, I actually found your channel late last year after I listened to the video you put out on hospital stories. Those were some really scary ones, and man what you went through on that night with the story that happened from your perspective, Creepy Fox? Talk about intense. But yeah, here's a scary story of mine. This happened in 2005, and I had just finished working out at the gym. And almost as soon as I got into my car, my dad called me and asked if I could go pick up some extra sodas, and maybe some beer for the party we were going to throw later that night for my mom's birthday. I said no problem and told him if there was anything else he could think of, just give me a call and I'll make sure to get it. The Walmart is literally in the same shopping center as the gym I go to, so instead of driving over, I just walked on over and went toward the sodas to grab the drinks he requested. I picked out some Dr. Peppers, our favorite, and a squirt too for my cousins since they were showing up and they don't like Dr. Pepper. Anyway, it was now that my dad called me and started to ask if I could also pick up some chips. He himself wanted some hot Cheetos. Sure, I said, as I start to make my way toward them while on the phone. Speaking in Portuguese, by the way, since that's what he prefers speaking. Okay, dad. Seems they don't have any hot Cheetos. Think of what else you want. As he was deciding, I noticed a man who was in his mid-30s kind of reminded me of the typical Giga Chad you see in the memes on the internet today. He came over to me and then without warning he says, Hey, I heard ya. Get out of here with that Spanish. This is America. We speak English around here. Oh yeah, you should have heard what my dad said since he heard that loud and clear. In fact, this guy made it his mission to say it out loud so everybody around us could hear it. I educated this buffoon by telling him it wasn't Spanish I was speaking, but Portuguese, and that I myself love this country and live in it just like him, so please just leave me be. He gave me this huge rant as he continued to call me out on what I was saying and even started to push and shove me. I was really trying hard to practice self-control at this point as some bystanders came over to see what was up. I mean, imagine bullying somebody for the way they speak and they look. Well, you're probably asking yourself, what's so scary about this? Just sounds like a jerk with nothing else to do. Well, I wasn't scared at all at first. 
but that's until he decided he was going to attack me out of nowhere and he didn't throw punches at me. He had a box cutter on him of all things and he used it to slash at my arm. Not gonna lie, that hurt really bad. Regardless, I didn't even get a chance to react or respond since it was one quick motion and I was now trying my best to hold back screams as my concern was, is he going to attack anyone else? I didn't want that and I had to stop him even through this screaming pain I had. That's what you get for speaking Portuguese. That should teach you a lesson. I still remember. Some customers had heard the commotion and came over, but before I got the chance to grab him, he takes off and acts stupid. He actually had the audacity to say that I was the one that injured myself, not the other way around. Sucked that nobody had seen it. Well, it didn't help that he put the box cutter back into his pocket, but after seeing the wound in my arm, and his continued rant against me, the customers caught on and started to call the cops. Meanwhile, some other people helped me take control of the situation and we were able to subdue him. Anyway, to make a long story short here, he would get jail time for attacking me with a weapon and it was a whole entire process dealing with all the legal stuff for the next couple of months. But the important part was that I would make a full recovery and that's what really mattered in the end. That and nobody else was injured. But anyway, that was the story of the time I went to Walmart and got attacked by some Giga Chad with a box cutter. Edit, I forgot to include this, but this took place in the state of Washington. It was late after a day of work in 2018. Since I was working overtime, I decided to stop by Walmart because I was pretty tired and just wanted to pick up some quick food items and junk food for my weekend relaxation. At 11pm, there weren't that many people around, so I made for a quick grab and go so to speak. But before I could even get back to my car and then get back to my apartment, something absolutely insane would happen that to this day gives me nightmares anytime I drive by that same Walmart. Anyway, just to let you know, since it was so late in the night, I parked right by the entrance, to the left to be more accurate, which has some lights from the store shining down on the cars. Now, I did see a homeless man that was smoking a cigarette when I got there originally, but when I finally left the Walmart and stepped out into the cold November rain, sorry for the bad pun, it was more like a sprinkle, I noticed the man was gone. Now, that might not seem like a really too much of an important detail right now, but as I'm slowly starting to make my way back to head home, I suddenly heard movement beside me. There was a small wall to my right, and on the other side there are all the shopping carts, where customers grab them to use them to go shopping. While it startled me enough to take a second to see what might have caused this sudden noise, curiosity I guess. And sure enough, it was that same homeless man from before. But something was different about him. I could see just enough of his face, thanks to the lights from the building above me, and his eyes were bloodshot. He has this really crazy look across his face, and it looks as if he's panicking, almost acting schizophrenic. This Walmart is in a pretty sketchy part of town, and being a short, petite female definitely wasn't doing me any sorts of favors, but I clenched onto my pepper spray, not keeping my eyes off of him the entire time, as he starts to catcall me and get closer. I now picked up my pace and get to my car, using the Bluetooth key to unlock it, but before I can even get a chance to close the door and start it up, the guy, I'm not even joking, jumps on top of the hood of my car and then starts punching at it like a madman. Naturally, I'm just there freaking out, making sure the doors are locked. Anger now took over, as fear is going away, and now I roll down the windows, just a tiny hair, so I can tell the guy to get off my vehicle or I was going to reverse and possibly get him hurt. It seemed like he didn't care about this as he continued his random episode of craziness. Well, by this point, I said screw it, and slowly I start to put the car into reverse, since there was no one else out here to help me, and wow, what a change. As he is losing his balance, he snaps his attention directly at me, looks into my eyes, and I can still clear his day, or night in this case, remember as he said, I'm going to kill you. 
He now finally lost his balance and fell straight on his behind, not even being phased by that thing, but by the time he starts to get up, I'm already driving away from him. I however didn't want to just let him try to go after somebody else, so I was enough of a safe distance where I called 911 and told them there was a man acting violently who tried to come after me. The lady on the phone told me to leave the area and let the cops handle it all, but me being me, I stuck around to see what would happen next. I saw as cops would get to the Walmart no more than 10 minutes later, and the guy was actually still walking around the parking lot, screaming and throwing a temper tantrum. Long story short, they were able to taser him, and I see them handcuff him as there were a few people who were watching from a distance as well. I left shortly after that since by now I was really exhausted, so I'm not sure whatever happened to that guy. There was that one story about the guy on bath salts who ate that guy's face, and I do wonder if maybe this could have been something similar. If not, he had to have been on some sort of other hallucinogenic that caused a change in his brain to suddenly act violently the way he did, since before when I saw him, he seemed pretty normal to me. My word of advice? If possible, avoid going to Walmart at night, or maybe don't go at all, but that's just me. For background context, I'm female and I was 24 years old. This took place December 2019, when I had been doing some Christmas shopping for family and friends. I had mostly stuck to the mall since most of the items on my shopping list consisted of clothes and gift cards from all the shops. My brother was different, however. He's always been into Yu-Gi-Oh! And while the GameStop in the mall did have some small things here and there regarding Yu-Gi-Oh! They didn't have the packs that I knew he wanted. I know this because he had mentioned it to my mom and then she told me. My brother is 10. Anyway, the employee at the GameStop told me to check the Walmart at the shopping center that's across the way from the mall. And thus, that's when I remembered that indeed, they do have a wall of trading cards there. So I wrapped up my shopping, got into my car and make the short drive over to the Walmart, parking closest to the entrance, and I made my way past the cashier's box area and get to where all the trading cards are. There were a couple of teenagers that were looking at Pokemon cards and an older man who was doing the same exact same thing. I located the packs I was looking for as I was now texting my mom to let her know I got them, and that older guy I mentioned from before walks over to me and says, Hey, you like Yu-Gi-Oh too? What's your name? Half paying attention, I said, Oh, hi, it's Michaela, and actually I'm getting them for my brother, that's all. Paying half attention to what I just said and saying my actual first name, instead of just making one up, would be one of the biggest mistakes of my life but I'll get to that in just a little bit. Anyway, he starts telling me his life story with playing Yu-Gi-Oh and how he collects all the trading cards, and my dumb self, not trying to be rude, just stands there half paying attention to his story. I got a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards at my house. Can I get your phone number? Maybe you might want some and you might want to pick some up? I said thanks, but I'm good and walked past him, finally leaving it be. Now, don't tune out just yet because this story of mine is about to get worse, as you're going to find out. Fast forward to after Christmas. It's a new year, new me, all that mumbo jumbo. I'm back at that same Walmart, but this time I'm here with my boyfriend. We had just ate about 15 minutes at the nearby Chinese restaurant, and he really needed to use the restroom now. I told him I would go ahead and start looking at some of the stuff that we came here for, and just to call me in case he can't locate me when he's done. Well, about five minutes of shopping around, you won't believe who I stumbled into again. Remember that guy from before Christmas? He's here in the toy section, in which I was helping my boyfriend pick out a toy for his younger brother, since his birthday was coming up at the end of January. Oh, you're that pretty girl I met last month. Do you still remember me? I played dumb acting as if he had me mistaken for someone else, but then what he does in that moment next was pretty out there. No, I'm pretty sure you're that same girl. You have that little flower tattoo on your wrist. I saw it as you were walking away last time. 
He no joke grabs a hold of my arm and then pulls up my sweater sleeve to show me my own tattoo, but I pull back and told him to keep his hands to himself. He apologizes, still acting really awkward and then asks me if I got in his messages on Instagram. I told him, no, I hadn't, but then he shows me the messages and is asking how if I change my mind, I could always message him back if I needed more Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now I know what you're probably thinking. How did this creepazoid find me on Instagram? Immediate flashbacks of me telling him my first name popped up in my head, and I felt a literal gut punch as I started to put it all together. This creep had really looked me up on Instagram as he used my name and remembered my face in order to find me. Weird. Now, as for not getting the message, it's because if someone sends me a message that doesn't follow me, at least how my account was set up, it would go into the request section. I never really looked there since if somebody wanted to message me, they could just follow me. But anyway, I looked and sure enough, there it was. Crazy. Now, luckily at this moment, my boyfriend arrives and seeing him, I get this sense of relief thinking, cool, this guy isn't going to try doing anything else now, is he? Well, after my boyfriend asked him what he was doing, he asks if indeed we were a couple, to which I confirm yes, we were. The guy now goes on about how I was leading him on and that I should be ashamed of myself, etc, etc, basically trying to guilt trip me. However, I never did such a thing, and if anything, he was the one who jumped to conclusions. My boyfriend, being the kind soul he is, told him in a very nice manner to just leave me alone, and the guy actually does. But I would later block him on Instagram and set my account to private. But can you believe this story still isn't over just yet? Yeah, it only gets even more scarier slash creepier. Fast forward about a month later, and I'm at my job. Nothing special, it's at Flame Broiler. But anyway, the creep from Walmart showed up. Oh great, here we go, I thought to myself. Oh, you work here? What a small world. Well, since he wasn't actually doing anything wrong, there wasn't much I could do, so I just take his order, cringing the whole time, and of course the store was currently empty, and it's just me, another cashier, who was on break, and the cooks. The guy got close to me and he whispered, You sure you haven't changed your mind? I can make you feel really good down there in your pants. I can't tell you how hard I tried not to punch him in the face at that point, because wow, I was this very close to doing so. But I did finally react by screaming out loud, as the cooks could now hear me. Get away from me, you pervert. I'm calling the cops. One of the cooks, his name is Manuel, looks through the little window where they place the food and asks what was happening. The creep took one last look at me, called me the B word, and some other inappropriate language, and then stormed out of the store. Not going to lie though, I got so freaked out that he had shown up to the flame broiler, I kept wondering whether or not he had been secretly stalking me, or indeed it was just a coincidence. As far as I know, it was a coincidence, because since then, I never did see him again. But not going to lie, those few months of uncertainty were definitely the worst. It got so bad I actually transferred to a different flame broiler, and then I would quit shortly after there, going to a business of my dad's friend. And in case you're wondering why I never bothered to report him, it's because like an idiot, I ended up deleting his messages after I blocked him since I never thought I was going to see him again, so I had no name or picture to show the cops. But anyway, that's my story of dealing with a creepy guy from Walmart. We as humans really do have a sort of sixth sense, don't we? Like you get chills that run down your spine? Yeah, I know that saying is so overused, but it's actually so true. All the hairs on your arms and back of your neck stand straight up, and you feel like something is wrong, or perhaps you're being watched. Well, that's exactly what I was feeling on a night in 2011, when I went to Walmart to grab some extra things I needed for the house. As I walked around, I kept looking back, but I would see no one, even though I did have this bad feeling. Call it a coincidence, or again, my sixth sense, because when I looked behind me again, 
This time I saw the quick movement of somebody jumping behind a display of clothing. I had enough at that point, so I walked back over to see who it might be, and what a surprise when I see it was my ex-boyfriend, Jacob. I had broken up with Jacob just a few months prior to this since he had been the kind of boyfriend who was very obsessive and controlling. Jacob now began to act nervous when I called him out on why he was following me around Walmart, and then he just admitted to doing it and apologizing. Well, whatever. I told him to knock it off, and now he started to apologize saying that he was here and just saw me and wanted to come over to say he was sorry for the way he treated me. He gave me the whole spiel on how he was sorry for hurting me and how he wanted another chance, and at that point I was still so hurt by all the things he had done, so I told him just to leave me alone, and he walked away. He didn't follow me. That is of course until about 10 minutes later. I was now paying for my things, and sure enough he's at self-checkout, now noticing me and taking his time to scan his stuff, as well as waving at me. Ugh, great, I muttered under my breath as the cashier asked me what was wrong, to which I replied to her, Don't worry, it's not about you. My ex once again waved at me, and then signaled, almost as if saying he wanted to say something to me one last time. I looked back away from him and focused my attention to the face of this Walmart employee as she hands over my receipt and I start to walk in the complete opposite direction from my boyfriend. No joke, he follows me now as I hear him calling my name, desperately trying to get me to stop. Jacob, I already told you leave me alone. At this point we're in the parking lot quite a distance away from everybody else, but it's what he does next that sends chills down my spine and puts me into a panic frenzy. He tells me, if I can't have you, then no one can. Yeah, because that's the last thing you want to hear somebody say. Now he fumbled for something in his jacket. We're both still walking at this point by the way, me just a little bit faster as I'm trying to get away from him. He pulled out a pocket knife and told me to stop what I was doing, and that he just wanted to talk to me. I noped at that point saying whatever to the few groceries I had, then screamed at the top of my lungs. He has a knife. Help, he has a knife. I got to my car, but by that point I saw that my ex-boyfriend had put the knife back into his jacket pocket and then took off running further into the parking lot. I pretty much drove straight to the police station at that point where I told them about what had just happened. The first police officer didn't really take me seriously and laughed in my face so I chose to speak to somebody higher up. She was a very nice lady, and after she heard what happened to me, she told me that they were going to look into it. And look into it they did, because without getting into too many details here and making this story longer than it needs to be, they would speak with them and I would get a restraining order. Here is the crazy part. A few years after that incident, I spoke with an old friend of mine and the topic of Jacob came up. She told me, Girl, you didn't hear? He was arrested not too long ago. He attacked a store clerk and robbed a liquor store with a fake gun. But luckily, there were a couple of cops at the coffee shop next door to him. My ex was so dumb. How in the world he never noticed the police was beyond me. Anyway, it was nice knowing he was behind bars. And I would never see nor hear from him ever again. And I actually moved out of the state in 2015, where I would meet my husband, Eric and start a family with them in 2018. We both enjoy listening to the stories here on The Creepy Fox, and we are super excited to hear about what you have in store for us in 2023. Hope you're going to be able to use this story in mind for an upcoming episode, and I hope that you stay healthy and blessed. Take care, my friend. This was back in the early 2000s when Pokemon was a huge craze. I mean, it still is today, just that it was more in its peak back then, in my personal opinion. By the way, it's sad to see what's happening with Pokemon, now with Ash Ketchum leaving the show and all, but hey, I guess that's just how things are. Thanks for all the memories, kid. So, as such, when I was a kid back in those days, my mom would always take me to the store to get a brand new toy when she got my report card. 
That's what was such an influence on ensuring I studied and worked hard. Well, I remember this night in particular after showing her my report card. My birthday was the following day. So, as a pre-celebration of sorts, my mom took me to Chuck E. Cheese for a couple of hours. I ate a lot of pizza and played plenty of games, but I knew that I was more excited for going to the Walmart next door. You see, while my mom did say she had some gifts for me the following day on my actual birthday, she said I was allowed to pick up one Pokemon toy that I wanted, as again, a pre-celebration to my birthday. Also, I guess because of the report card with the good grades. When we walked into the aisle of Pokemon toys, there were plenty of parents there, including, of all people, my teacher, Miss Velasquez. She immediately recognized my mom and I, since my mom and her are good friends from college, and they start to hit it off talking about how I was a good kid and how she was proud of all the hard work I had done. Me being the impatient kid I was, I made my greetings quick and grabbed the Charizard figure I'd come for and then pass it on to my mom so she could grab a hold of it. Miss Velasquez and my mother talked for what seemed like an eternity, and while they're talking, I told my mom I wanted to go to the aisle next to us to see if maybe they had some more Pokemon toys there. Both Miss Velasquez and my mom were half paying attention, so I go anyway, telling myself, well, it's only going to be for a few seconds, not a problem. Turned out, I was about to get myself into a whole lot of problems. Unlike the previous aisle, this one was empty, and I could see why, as it was the one with the Barbies. Not a fan myself, so I went over to the next one. Hot Wheels, Matchbox, and Power Rangers. I also liked Power Rangers. Not as much as Pokemon, but enough to get interested, to get lost at the cool designs of the Power Rangers and the Zords. I was looking at them, not paying attention to my surroundings, and all of a sudden a middle-aged man walks up to me. Nothing about him seems suspicious, and at first I think he's an employee. You like Power Rangers? I looked up, and he's clean cut, and he's got a friendly smile across his face. Yeah, I do. They're pretty cool. Isn't that swell? I'm a manager here. We got a whole lot of exclusive Power Rangers stuff in the truck behind the Walmart. You want to come see? Yes, I can already hear all of you out there writing this out and saying, these are some serious alarm bells. But in the mind of a seven-year-old, being surrounded by all these colors and the cool toys and characters, you forget all the lessons your parents taught you about stranger danger. I believed him, and he takes my hand, and we begin to walk out of the aisle as he keeps talking to me about Power Rangers. Daniel, where are you going? I ended up turning back, and I see my mom, and I tell her, Mom, he's going to show me all the new Power Rangers toys they have in the back. Want to come? Suddenly, he lets go of my hand, and he takes off running. I was confused in that moment. Did that mean I was no longer seeing the cool new exclusive Power Rangers toys? Well, yeah, I think you all know what was up. The guy was no manager, and I got scolded really bad by my mom, but she later cried, to which I was confused. Anyway, here is the super scary part about this that my mom told me all these years later. You see, the topic of elementary school came up when I went to visit her with my kids, and I joked about that one time I followed that fake manager in Walmart. My mother told me the following. I never told you this when you were younger because, one, you probably wouldn't have understood, and two, I didn't want to alarm you, but you see that guy was actually arrested because he tried abducting kids. Not only that, but the cops found inappropriate pictures and belongings from them. Now pardon me here, I know the creepy fox has to deal with a lot of BS with the YouTube censors and community guidelines, even though he's just telling my story and he's not promoting anything bad. So pardon the vagueness of my wording here, but those pictures, well I think you can put two and two together. Basically the letter C and then the letter P. Those were the pictures the cops found in his home. Yeah, it really freaked me out even as an adult, but I see why my mom never told me and brought it up. Anyway, 
I would use stranger danger and all the lessons that come with it in order to teach my kids about the creeps out there in the world. And luckily, they have no issues, probably because I've scared any weirdos out there away. In 2017, I had hurt my ankle really badly during a skiing trip and I had to use crutches and a knee scooter in order to get around for a couple of months. It was annoying, but I eventually got used to it and by the time I was fully healed, I appreciated life even more. I mean, look at you creepy fox. You've been powering through a total knee replacement and various other surgeries and procedures. I looked up that giant cell tumor you had, the 10 centimeter one, and it's like you said, cases of giant cell tumors are one in every one million people in the United States, and there's no reason behind getting them. You really inspire me and so many others. But yeah, I bring this up because as I was recovering from my ankle injury, I had a very creepy encounter at where else do you think? Walmart. Here's the lowdown. I was 19 at the time, and my dad was taking me out to get pizza in order to try and cheer me up since I was feeling pretty sad I couldn't do much, like running for example. At first he wanted to go to Walmart since my mom had asked we go to pick up some things. She wasn't home at the time since she was working that day and my dad had the day off. So we're going down the walkways. My dad is telling me typical dad jokes and we eventually get to where all the cookies are. Now knowing my dad he takes forever deciding what snackos he wants. So I told him I was going to go down three aisles to the right since I wanted to see if they had mac and cheese my personal favorite. He could always grab it for me when he gets there. Well, as soon as I roll my way over to the aisle next door, there is some guy in his mid-forties who is picking his nose. Ugh, what a great sight to see. Not. Now, here's a quick description on him. He had a beer belly that was sticking out of his white stained t-shirt. He's balding, black bags underneath his eyes, as if he hadn't slept in days and was around five foot six and overweight. He immediately walked over to me and asked if I needed any sort of assistance with grabbing anything from the shelves. I told them I'm good and I was just looking around. The man did not take no for an answer and keeps on insisting that it's not a problem at all. He would be more than happy and delighted to help somebody out who looked just like his daughter. Weird thing for him to say that, but thanks I guess. I don't know. Hey, I'll invite you to grab some dinner. Tell me, what do you want? And it's yours. No, no thank you. I'm good. You're really too kind. But I'm kind of busy here shopping with my dad. I thought now that I mentioned my dad, he's going to hear that and he'll back off. But no. He then asked if he could get a picture together with me so he could show that to his wife and daughter. At that point, I knew this guy was going to give me trouble. I was about to scoot her away, but he puts his hand on me and tries to lean in for a kiss. I turned back and socked him right in the eye and then scooted away screaming bloody murder. Now luckily he didn't follow me, although he did curse at me in response. My dad was just turning the corner and when I looked back, after hearing footsteps running off, he was long gone. Long story short, I told my dad about him being weird and how he was trying to kiss me, and man, my dad lost it there. Without any sort of hesitation, he took off running after the creep, telling a couple with some kids that were next to us, who just so happened to have walked into the aisle, to keep an eye on me. And my dad relayed to me that unfortunately, he wasn't able to find him, but he says that had he... He doesn't know what he would have done to him, so maybe it turned out for the better since my dad has always been very protective of me, probably because I'm the only child. Anyway, that was pretty much the end of my story. Now I know some people out there are going to scoff this story of mine off and say, man this isn't the scariest story in the world, but just put yourself in my shoes for a second and think of yourself with an injury. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? So that's my story submission of the creep who said I looked just like his daughter 
and then of all things, try to kiss me, but got socked right in the eye by yours truly. Hey there, creepy fox. To be honest, I've been away from your channel for quite a while. I got busy with our first baby, but I've had more time to come back and enjoy the great videos you've been putting out. They've helped me so much with relaxing at night, just like they have in the past. As such, I did see you were having a hard time getting subscribers to send scary stories in. A shame since I do enjoy hearing stories I've never heard before that aren't repeats from Reddit. But I totally understand if you might have to do that someday. Point being, I'm here to contribute to one of my scary stories so you can share it with your subscribers and hopefully it helps you with a video with no repeats. So anyway, this was during the time I used to work the night shift at my local Walmart. I no longer live in that same town, but it was pretty safe. Nothing too crazy, and I think that's what I really liked most about it. Sometimes there were weirdos at Walmart, but it wasn't anything we couldn't handle. Except this one time when all the previous crazies got outbeaten. I was working the night shift, and I was helping train one of the new employees. Her name was Natalie. She was just a few years younger than me, and she was using this part-time job to help her pay some bills for college. I was helping out an elderly woman at that moment with questions, and Natalie is in my view helping out somebody else. As I'm talking with this elderly woman, a middle-aged man approached Natalie, who looked to be acting really strange. I let her handle it, and it's as I'm finishing up with assisting this older lady, I heard that weird guy who came up to Natalie curse at her, but then tried to grab her. I immediately ran over and told the man to knock that off, and that behavior was inappropriate. It was now I get the smell of alcohol enter my nostrils, and things are beginning to make a lot more sense now. This guy is drunk. Well, he told me basically to F off, and now starts to threaten me, saying I can't tell him what he can and can't do. Basic, drunk talk. Again, I remind him that if he's going to act this way, I'm going to have to ask him to leave the store. And that's what ended up causing him to do what he did next. You see, as some other employees came over, one of them went to get security. Without any kind of warning, he reaches out to me and begins to choke me at full force. Life was going into slow motion, and what seemed like an eternity was really only about 7 seconds. Luckily, some good Samaritans get the guy off of me and wrestle him to the ground as security comes to take over. The guy was detained as I was trying to catch my breath and trying to act cool, but deep down inside I was freaking out because of how close I was to losing consciousness. Regardless of myself, I was just happy and glad that Natalie and everybody else was okay. Long story short, I did press charges, and the guy was banned from that Walmart and all the Walmarts in the city, which served him right. But yeah, I never did see him again. This is 2004, and I was in middle school. One afternoon, myself and some friends of mine stopped by our local Walmart on our scooters because we wanted to pick up some sodas and chips. We would be having an all-boy sleepover, and since it was Friday night, we would stay up watching movies and playing video games. But in order to get to that fun, we got to get through the very creepy thing, which is what my submission here to the Creepy Fox is all about. So anyway, we are grabbing our junk food, minding our own business like any other preteens do, telling stupid, inappropriate jokes at the same time. And out of nowhere, this random lady walks over to us and then asks us where our parents were. She seemed pretty sketchy, but as to not jump to conclusions, we gave an honest answer and just play it cool. The lady then said, You kids remind me a lot of the devil's children that I used to play with when I was your age. To this day, that's still one of the weirdest things that somebody has ever said to us. But regardless, we laugh it off and we begin to walk away. But she now started to follow us. All the while, we can hear her mumbling something. 
kind of sounded like chanting. I guess the best way I can describe it is if you're a fan of Chucky. You know, the killer doll. You know how Chucky has to do that chant in order to transfer to a different body? Kind of a chant like that. But the last thing we needed was for her to be the real life Chucky and to transfer herself into one of us. The lady would proceed to follow us outside the Walmart too and as we're waiting at the green light to cross the street, yes, she followed us there too. She said, I put a curse on you kids and I'm going to visit you at night and sacrifice you to Lucifer himself. We were genuinely freaked out by that. After all, it's not every day some crazy lady does that. Now, it's not that we're trying to be mean since we weren't even sure if maybe perhaps she was mentally ill or maybe on drugs or maybe both, who knows. But for her to say sacrifice us, yeah, a little bit too much. Needless to say, we got out of there and we stayed up the whole night thinking that the lady was going to come back to get us. But spoiler alert, she never did. And thus, that ends my creepy and weird Walmart story. I know it wasn't that long, but I'm not exactly the best writer. So anyway, thanks for listening. Hey, so that was the last story for today's episode. And, um, well, what can I say? Uh, welcome back everyone to the Creepy Fox podcast. I did end up taking a couple of weeks off there, uh, for the last few weeks of, uh, December and the first week of uh, January, mainly as a recharge just because I worked so much on videos throughout 2022 and also because again the lack of story submissions I had there wasn't really much to do so you know I didn't really have much to make but as you saw today subscribers came in clutch. Thank you to these 10 incredible subscribers who sent in their stories that is what we're talking about. That is incredible. Thank you. And actually, I have some more stories that subscribers sent in. So I have enough to make at least another four or five videos, which is cool because that kind of gives us a bit of a buffer zone. Like, it is crazy. It was like, I guess, a Christmas gift, if you will, if you want to call it that, if you want to consider that. Subscribers, like I said, just I don't know what happened. Like, I think the videos finally got recommended to the right subscribers who, you know, have wanted to share stories but didn't know I was still uploading. So I guess YouTube was like, hey, um, Merry Christmas to you guys. Uh, the Creepy Fox is still alive um, and stuff. So uh, anyway, like I said, um, thank you to all the awesome subscribers who sent in stories. But uh, let's see, um, how have all of you been? Uh, I feel like I don't hear from a lot of you anymore. Um, leave it in the comments so let me know how your holidays were. As for me, uh, things were pretty okay. They were pretty quiet, just uh, mainly stuck here to the house, just uh, hanging out with my family. Um, I ended up getting a fever a few days ago before recording these stories. I'm recording these stories January the 6th. Um, I technically started January 5th, like at like 10 p.m., but it carried over to the next day. But yeah, I just felt like really weak. Um, I had what we call in Spanish, calofrios. Uh, it literally translates to like cold warmth. Uh, so I would at times, you know, maybe I think guess that's how fevers are. It's It's been so long since I've gotten sick. So um, when I get sick, I get really sick. Um, I think the last time I got sick was, I genuinely, I think the last time I actually got like sick sick was like 2019. Um, I mean, I might get like, I've had occasional like stuffy noses, um, but that's mostly because I have allergies, uh, really bad allergies. But like to get sick sick like that, like I said, it's been since like about 2019. I've been very blessed not to get sick. Um, but yeah, I ended up, uh, Getting knocked out for about four or five days, but uh, like I said, I was feeling really good, so I recorded these uh, these stories. But um, oh, by the way, thank you so much uh, to the subscribers from this channel 
And uh, I guess if there are any subscribers from the second channel that are coming out to check out the Creepy Fox podcast, thank you for checking out uh, my uh, the second channel with the music covers. Um, it got a pretty good response there. And uh, we are currently in the production of two more song covers. So one of them is going to be a cover of the song Still Into You from Paramore. One of my personal favorites. Um, that one will be in English version. As you saw, the two covers we did before were Japanese versions of songs. Uh, one was the Mariah Carey song. The other one was the All Time Low song, the Christmas songs. Um, but yeah, um, a uh, English cover of Paramore Still Into You. And in order to still give you guys a Japanese cover, I decided that I would go ahead and uh, produce a Japanese cover of a Japanese song. And that song is the opening theme song to Dragon Ball GT. The Dan Dan Kokoro Hikare Teku um, song. Uh, it's a classic. It's uh, Dragon Ball has always been one of my favorite classic show, favorite shows. So that one I, I definitely wanted to produce. So at the moment as I'm recording this audio, we are in the process of recording the instrumentals. And then Kay, she's the one that voices my character, Jamie. She'll go ahead and do the vocals. And then my buddy Leonardo that does the album artwork will work on the album artwork. And long story short, uh, we should have all of that done by the end of uh, this month. Uh, by, I'd say by the um, first week of February, those uh, two cover songs should be out. And uh, from there, that's four uh, covers. Um, I think from there, I'll probably just do, I'll probably just stick to one cover a month for, from then on. Uh, we'll see. Um, maybe I might have some ideas where I do two or three covers a month, but I think for now, just to get us started, you know, four covers, and then, you know, we're going to just do these uh, maybe once a month uh, covers, covers, can't speak, <laughs> covers from there. But yeah, um, regarding any updates here, just going to continue uh, making videos for you all um, again, at least if I do what, two uploads a week? Uh, we are good for the next, I, I'd say we should be good for the rest of this month. Um, again, it all depends on subscriber submissions. Uh, a lot of people have been telling me that they do like the no repeat stories. They do like that, you know, I'm not doing stories from Reddit. So um, as long as uh, things are, you know, the way they are, we can continue to do that. If not, again... Um, we will explore the options of, you know, continuing the compilation episodes where I go back to previous episodes. Usually, I usually tend to go to the very old episodes. I re-record those stories, then I go ahead and include them, you know, as a compilation. Or again, uh, if I have to, I will go ahead and contact authors on Reddit and I'll let them know like, hey, you know, can I feature your story on a video and it's either yes or no. And then, you know, we can greatly uh, increase the output of videos, but then, you know, the, the whole thing I've talked about with the repeats, I don't want to get into that. I, I've talked about that a lot of times, but you know, the, the pros and cons to reading from Reddit. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to spend too much time here. I've already spent uh, quite a while, but uh, right now I want to go ahead and give a shout out to uh, my channel members. We have a couple of brand new channel members here since the last time I made a video. Thank you to Robbie, to Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Scott, Linz, Maribel, Medusa Dil, Silent, Dread Archive, Sean, Corey, and our two newest channel members, Jen and Cara Flanders. Thank you so much for your support. Just know that it means the world to me that uh, you support me financially with your channel membership. And thank you to all the regular viewers who are watching the videos that are tuning in to all the uploads and then sharing the videos with family and friends. I really greatly appreciate that. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, end it here. Thank you for listening to this message at the end of the video. I will see you guys very soon with another narration video. And until then, take care and have yourself an amazing day.